2D platform games are fan favorite among many people. Most people know them from their origins, from around the time the NES came out all the way until newer games such as Shovel Knight. But did you know that since iOS became a prominent gaming platform, 2D platformers have also been more significant in this platform? In this video, we're going to be talking about the top 5 2D platformers that are exclusive for iOS or Android. So here we go. Devious Dungeon came out for iOS in 2014, while Devious Dungeon 2 came out in 2015. These two games were developed by Ravenous Games, and overall they're both pretty similar to one another. But part of the reason what makes them stand out a little bit more above most others is the fact that they're very fast-paced. They're very fun and also very simplistic, but at the same time, it does feel like you're making progression throughout the game. The reason why is because the more enemies you defeat and the more progress you make in terms of finding secret items, the more money you've made and that money can then be spent on new equipment, new armor, and so on and so forth. The two games are well known for having random room generators, which means that one playthrough is not the same exact thing as a second playthrough, or a third playthrough, or a fourth playthrough, and so on. There are also break rooms as well as bosses, and overall the boss battles are super fun. In terms of controls, it's very simple. Simply jump, attack, and move left or right. And that's it. Very simple. The difficulty is right on par, it starts very easy, but it progressively gets a lot harder, a lot more challenging, but at the same time, you are developing your skills, your health, your defense, and so on, which does make the difficulty on par, not too easy, not too hard. Perfect difficulty. Overall, the Devious Dungeon games are really well known for being fast-paced, fun, and just very simple to play in your spare time. Traps and Gemstones was developed by Donut Games and it was released in 2014. The game defies the norms of what a typical 2D platformer should be. The biggest reason why is because there is not a real big emphasis on combat or fighting. Instead, the really big emphasis is instead on exploration. The entire premise of the game is to uncover the big raveling secrets of a giant pyramid. So the explorer, which is the main character, must then go around the pyramid and try to uncover the secret. There's also a lot to be exploring optionally, for example, a lot of weapons, a lot of items, relics, and secret rooms as well. Overall, the game is about exploring and collecting as opposed to combat, even though there are some weapons, there's not a whole lot of combat. Because there's not a whole lot of combat, you actually always die in one hit. However, keep in mind that it's really all about just avoiding attacks, and in general, it's not too difficult to avoid attacks. The relics are the story progression of the game. The more relics you get, the more places you can then discover, and once you have all relics, you pretty much beat the game. As previously mentioned, the entire game takes place in only one giant pyramid, which means that the map is only one huge section, which is pretty interesting as opposed to other 2D platformers that rely a level by level. It also shows what percentage of the pyramid you have yet discovered, and yes, you can reach 100%, which is the ultimate goal of the game as well. There's also a couple other things as well, such as riding minecarts, which kind of resembles Donkey Kong Country, and then swimming underwater, and many other things as well. Also a big plus, this game does in fact support MFI controllers, which is always a nice perk. So that's the game. Out of all the 2D platform games on the App Store, the Left's World Trilogy is by far the one that resembles Super Mario the most. The games were released by a company that to this day I still have somewhat of a trouble pronouncing, called Nerbyte GmbH. The original Left's World came out in 2012, whereas Left's World 2 and 3 then followed years later. As a random note, they have recently released Left's World Run, which is kind of like an infinite runner version of the game. But as you can see by looking at the gameplay, the game strongly resembles Super Mario and it's no doubt that they were heavily inspired from it. The levels are also detailed in that way, for example 1-1, 1-2, 1-3, and so on and so forth. The levels are rather short, like Super Mario in general, and there's a lot of coin collecting, acorn collecting, and defeating enemies and jumping on top of them as well. Like I keep saying, huge resemblance to Super Mario. Just like Mario and most platformers, the longer you hold a jump button, the further the character will jump. One unique aspect of the game is the fact that you can launch acorns, simply collect them and then throw them forward to damage enemies. Because the original Left's World came out in 2012, this is known as one of the earlier times in which 2D platformers were coming out for the App Store, or at least the good polished ones. The years following 2012 were when more and more 2D platformers slowly but surely started to come out. 
Overall, Leps World is a very fun, cute-like, somewhat fast-paced game which really makes time go by. Sortigo is a very unique 2D platformer in the App Store when compared to many other 2D platformers in the App Store. For one, the background has depth. This of course means that the graphics look a little bit different as opposed to many other platformers. Even though the gameplay is purely two-dimensional, the depth at least adds some value to the game as well. The game was released by TouchFu in 2012, which is also one of the earlier time periods of 2D platform games in the App Store. However, what makes it really stand out is also the same thing that makes Traps and Gemstones stand out, in that it's not a typical 2D platform game that has different levels. Instead, it's one huge world that's interconnected between areas. Sortigo is a game that has received such a high amount of critical acclaim because of its uniqueness. For one, it highly resembles Metroid and Castlevania, specifically Symphony of the Night. This type of genre is known as Metroidvania a genre that resembles more so exploration with one huge world as opposed to beating a level by level by level. As far as the gameplay, well, you can jump, you can attack, and well, that's pretty much it. Although there are a couple more things as well, such as shooting magic and using special abilities, but for the most part, the controls are very simplistic. The goal of the game is to repair the Mage Blade, which can then be used to defeat the evil of the game. But because it's a Metroidvania style of game, there is so much exploration and so many secrets to obtain as well which makes the game that much more entertaining. Overall, the game is really well loved, so it's always a recommendation to play it. Out of all 2D platform games in the App Store, Goblin Sword is by far the smoothest and most well-polished game I've seen. The biggest reason why it's number one is because, well, to be completely honest, I was actually very, very shocked at how polished and smooth the game is. The game was released in 2014 and was released by Gelato Games. The developers stated that they had only been working on Goblin Sword for quite a long time, which does make sense. So first of all, the game is very responsive. The controls are super responsive. Simply move back and forth, jump up and down, and attack. And overall, it works really well. The jumping mechanic is also one of the more advanced ones because simply you hold the button more, the character jumps for longer. Hold the button less, the character jumps less, like most platformers on home consoles. The attacking animation is also very simplistic but also very well functioning. The hitboxes are perfect, the difficulty is on par, it can get more difficult later on but to be honest by that point you have more health and more skills. Throughout the game you will be obtaining more armor, which is purely cosmetic, more weapons, which have more damage range and speed, and accessories too, which give you bonus abilities. For example, some of them can let you jump three times, some will let you avoid traps, and so on and so forth. The boss battles can sometimes be a little bit difficult, but they are also extremely entertaining to play. It's worth noting that in this game, everything in the game damages the exact same amount. However, it's not actually a bad thing. In fact, it's kind of a good thing because of the difficulty being on par. There are also secret levels that you can discover by finding secret crystals. As far as each level goes, there are three hidden crystals and two treasures. The treasures can contain more gems, which equals more money, or other things as well, such as heart containers or armor, which is purely cosmetic. The crystals are simply used to unlock the secret bonus levels of the game. Overall, there is a lot to do in this game which makes it really fun, and like I said, it's super well polished. And also, a final shout out to the game being very compatible with MFI controllers, and this MFI controller function is also very smooth. Overall, fantastic game, the best 2D platformer I have seen on the App Store, by far. So that was the top 5 iOS games, let me know what you think, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you like another 2D platforming game on the App Store that I did not mention? If you do, leave a comment. Mention it, because maybe I haven't heard of it. I've heard of most games, but not all. But overall, be sure to like, comment, and always subscribe, because it's very helpful. But it also shows me that you are supporting my channel, and I will always take feedback into consideration. Thank you very much, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great day.